Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, respected viewers. Welcome back to our live program in honor of a grand personality, the father of the 12th Imam, Imam al Askari alayhi salatu wa salam. Alhamdulillah, we've had an uh, in depth discussion with our respected guest, Sheikh Muhammad al Hilli, on the family of Imam al Askari alayhi salatu wa salam, his brother, his mother. And before we continue, we have a beautiful nasheed, inshallah. We have much uh, to discuss and we have much to hear. So inshallah, we'll now pass on to our uh, respected dear guest, Mullah Rashid. I'm sure you have a beautiful nasheed prepared for us and viewers are uh, willing to hear you, inshallah. So inshallah. please inshallah. bless us with your uh, words in honor of the Imam. Inshallah. inshallah. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to start with a small introduction <coughs> in Arabic. Um, and then inshallah, we'll get to yes. the nasheed. حب النبي الهاشمي ديني صلى عليه واهب اليقين صلى عليه واهب اليقين صلى من رمش طرف عينيه لا 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 شك تكفيني لا شك تكفيني حسن العسكري Hassan al Askari, 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 the last of petals, birthed by Al Batul, gifted by Rasul. Father of Mahdi, Father of Mahdi, part of the flower, who's known as Zahra, rises another king from Hashimi, king from Hashimi, his love is sown and dispersed by Zahra in heaven. The seeds are blown, scattered grains of intercession. Hassan al Askari, 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 Hassan al Askari. The lantern of light, beaming, shining bright, glowing with its might. Al Hadi the guide, Al Hadi the guide, and his golden dome reflects his household, a gift to mankind. Oh, Samara's pride, oh, Samara's pride, his heart of gold, so behold, the prince known as Zaki, his heart of gold, so behold, the prince known as Zaki, the radiant gleaming path in difficulty. Hassan al Askari, Hassan al Askari, Hassan al Askari. Hassan al Askari, Hassan al Askari, Hassan al Askari, Hassan al Askari, Hassan al Askari. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad. Ahsan tazakum Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you, insha Allah, and be beautiful to hear such words in honor of our eleventh Imam. You know, there are traditions, actually, 
from Ayman Ahlul Bayt themselves, where Ahlul Bayt would encourage reciting of shair, you know, of poetry yeah. from Imam Rada alayhi salam, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. They would come and recite in front of them, in their presence, even Masaib sometimes. You know, we have traditions yeah. from Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. Imam Rada alayhi salam would call them and say, recite for me something about my grandfather Hussein. Or sometimes they would say, recite for us something in honor of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam. And they would bless them by even honoring them something as a gift in return. And sometimes they say, Ya ibn Rasulillah, ju'iltu fidak, may I be sacrificed for you? I don't want this. He says, no, this is as a gift from me to you for reciting uh, in honor of us. So there, it's really throughout the traditions of Ahlul Bayt, there's been so much emphasis on reciting for Ahlul Bayt, whether it's be in the form of poetry or it be in the form of a lecture, or, you know, just to stand up and say something. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah bless you for that. Shaqla, just to continue our conversation, I came across something very interesting which I want to share with you. A historian uh, writes that out of all of the a'imma, the imam who expressed his ilmul ghaib the most was Imam al-Askari alayhi salam. And it's interesting and he gives a reason for it as well. Uh, you know, he lists all of the kamalat, all of the mujazat or the miracles in which the Imam والسلام, shows his ilmul ghaib to the people, knowledge of the unseen to the people. And he says the reason is because at that time, due to the high level of taqiyya, as you mentioned, where the Imam would say, do not meet me, do not greet me, do not say salam to me, stay away from me. Even if you say, see me from far, some companions would come and want to meet the Imam, but the Imam would say, just stay there, yeah. you know, don't come. I've even read a tradition that once the holy Imam al-Askari is going through a, you know, a marketplace and one of his Shia is sitting in the corner and when he's in the market, right? When he sees the Imam, he wants to get up and come and greet him. The tradition says, Imam from far, he says, mm, as in yeah. quiet, you know? Yeah. In other words, you stay away. Yeah. And it later explains to him there were spies watching. You know, there were spies everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. But there was so much confusion, like you said, because of taqiyya and knowing that there will be the Mahdi who will be born and the Abbasis would be fearful. Like, you know, these guys, they're, you know, the Alawis love them. The Shias, they love them. And at that time, you know, places like Qom, places like Kufa, places like Azerbaijan, Georgian, and Basra, and all these places had become strongholds of Shia. And the Shia uh, centers were, especially Qom and Kufa, these places were headquarters if you like, of Shia. So whenever they would come from there to meet the Imam or Imams would meet anyone, they would begin a little, they would panic. They say, what if these guys rise up against us? What if they form a group against us or bring a revolution or there's a trouble, there's trouble for us. So they would not let the Imam meet anyone. But this historian, he writes that the reason that the Imam والسلام, used his ilmul ghaib so much was to show them the dalail of his Imam. Hmm. To show them that this, I am the Imam. Yeah, maybe, you know, I cannot come out and say, I am the Imam. You know, you are to obey me. Or sometimes there was so much false propaganda against them. There were different ways that the Holy Imam would use his Ilmul Ghaib to show the people that I am the Imam. I'll give it an example yeah. and I'll pass over to you. Yeah, yeah. As you know, the Imam spent a lot of time in prison. Mm. Either in prison or under house arrest in Iraq. When he was brought to Samarra, Surah Manra. He was put in house arrest, and when he was not in house arrest, he was in prison. And when, it, when he was not in one or the other, he was summoned to the court of the Caliph Monday and Thursday. Every Monday and every Thursday, he had to go to the court of the Caliph. And we have many traditions where the Imam enters the court and what happens there. And this was a way to keep an eye on the 11th Imam. What is Imam al-Askari doing? Who is he meeting? Who is he greeting? Who is he speaking with? And what is he speaking? So now once the Imam is in prison, in one of these prisons, sometimes they'll be moved around from prison to prison. Different people had prisons. There's an interesting riwayah that exists here. Imam is in prison with some of his Shia. And then they gather around the Imam and one day one of the Shia gets up and he says, Ya ibn Rasulillah, you know, when will I be released? When will we be released mm. from this prison? Mm. So the Imam says, had there not been one amongst you who is not, who is not from you, I would, I would tell you when you would be released. I said, what do you mean? Had there not been one amongst you who is, not, who is not from you? What do you mean by that? Then he points towards a guy who was sitting in the back of the prison, mm. who was a prisoner. Mm. He says, he is not from you. He says, what do you mean? He says to him, you know, Imam Alayhi points to him to leave. He gets up and he leaves and he goes to the 
goes to the back. Then Imam, he says to his companions, this is a spy of Bani Abbas. Hmm. If you don't believe me, check it. What do they do? They go to him, they check him. They find papers within his pockets in which he has been recording the conversations of Imam al-Askari with the Shia in prison. What they're talking, what they're discussing. And every time the guard comes, he hands those papers and those papers are then taken back to the Caliph. Now imagine that. Imagine what kind of taqiyya they lived in, the latter Imams, as we mentioned. We don't have much from them because they weren't allowed to say much. We don't have much from them because they weren't allowed to meet openly. Even in prison, it's like having a CCTV camera, you know, yeah. watching you at all times. Well, you didn't have a camera back then, but you had a spy who's constantly watching you and reporting you. So this was an ilmul ghayb of the imam. Mm. When, they, when they held him, they checked his pockets. Exactly what the imam said was there. Shekhna, I want to pass over to you to yeah. share with us some more on Absolutely, the, yes. This the is time. very interesting yes. about, uh, maybe one way to look at it is the reason why the Imam Ali Salam wanted to establish this. And by the way, today we have a group of people who are questioning the, I, the, the belief that we have within the school of Ahlul Bayt that the Imam Ali Salam, the Prophet, the Prophets are given ilmul ghayb by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, this is a realization in the Quran that this is not independent knowledge of the unseen. It's given to them by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they say, no, only Allah has knowledge of the unseen, which is not in accordance with the Quran. But it's interesting because, of course, Imam al-Askari's time was a very delicate time because the next Imam would not necessarily be seen by many people. So it's the beginning of the preparation for the major occultation. And so the belief in Imamat needs to be deep, needs to be not superficial because, you know, Sometimes when you have someone next to you, you're confident. You say, okay, they are always there. They'll look after me. They'll be there for me. And you don't necessarily work hard regarding, for example, convincing people about this person. Right. Because they're there. Right. But when they're not there, there's a much more difficult task for the Shia to talk about the fadal of the imams, the characteristics of the imams. And so the, these need to be cemented. Imam al-Askar had to cement them, had to make people see. So in, in addition to the story you mentioned, there is an interesting uh, story as well. There was a man by the name of Abu Sabagh al-Maliki. He says, I was with Imam al-Askar with six other Shia, and we were in a dungeon, also in a prison, he says, Muhammad al Hazan ibn Ali. So we were there and Imam al-Askari came with us. He said, we basically uh, were one day sitting and we decided that every day we will fast. Mustahab right, fasting. Okay. We will fast. And, uh, you know, because we're with the Imam, we're benefiting from him. And that's another beautiful thing, at least in the prison. They were next to, as you mentioned, the story. The spirituality. The, the spirituality, just being with the Imam. Sohbah of the Imam. One of them, with the Shia, one of them, one of the days, just didn't want to fast, but didn't want to tell the Imam or others that he wants to break his fast. So what he did was he waited in an area where there is no one watching. And he went in the corner and he broke his fast. Just at something, you know, like... In the, in the private. So he came after him, no, no sign. Imam looked at him and said to him very interestingly, Afatart, you have broken your fast. The man became a bit embarrassed. I was wondering, how does the Imam know? Of course, you can't wonder this if you're a true follower of Ahlul Bayt. You cannot do that, no. yes? Uh, it's like that particular lady, uh, unfortunately, that woman in the Quran that questions the Holy Prophet. The Prophet came. And said, you know, you have conspired against me. She said, who told you? Man anba'aka bihada. You know, mm. in the famous story uh, 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 of, of the, it's told in, su uh, in Surah, um, I think, Al-Mujadala, uh, chapter 66 of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, Surah Tahrim, sorry, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of the, these two women, wives of the Prophet, wives that conspired the prophet, yeah. against the Holy Prophet. Here, this man says to him, he doesn't say anything. Look at the Imam, Ali Salam is very nice. He says to him, Ukul al -laham. If you really wanted to break your fast, eat meat. Mm -hmm. Then he says to him, فَإِنَّ الْكَعَكَ لَا قُوَّةَ فِي It seems <laughs> that that man went and had this ka'ak. Now, either ka'ak was some cake, or in Iraq or some countries, the Arabs know, ka'ak is like a rusk, hard rusk that you dip into tea. Most of us dip right. into tea to soften it, and then you have it, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what ka'ak is. Like so Imam biscuit. says to him, if you're going to break your fast, don't break it with kak. Break it with some meat. At least you get energy. So this man is thinking, I, I, I didn't tell anyone. And he actually knows how I broke 
the fast what actually i had what food i had is something that uh, imam so this is an indication knew. again of ilm al ghaib yes how did the imam. imam know what's interesting is in the holy quran there's a ayah regarding isa alayhi salam mm. in which isa alayhi salam says i will inform you what you store in your homes i will inform you what you've eaten in your homes in other words i know what you do in your homes mm. So Isa Nabi Allah alayhi salam, if he has ilm al ghayb, then I'm Ahlul Bayt who have maqam greater than of Anbiya alayhi salam. Yes. But Tariq al Awla, the two have ilm al ghayb. And we have too many. Isa will pray behind Imam al Mahdi. Imam al Mahdi alayhi If he had the higher status, then he will have to be what? The leader of the salah. Imam and, uh, will pray One of the uh, shahid is that he has more ilm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the one so who that's the at least. Knowledge. There's a very interesting story yes. here that I'd like to draw your attention. It's, an, it's a nice one about Imam al Askar alayhi salam, but also not only points to his excellence as attributes of the Imams, but their courage. You know, it's sometimes, you know, when we live in our lives like this, where Alhamdulillah, we're able to express, we're able to celebrate, hear beautiful recitations, remember the Ahl al Bayt alayhi salam. But at times, you know, of the Ahl al-Bayt, and even today, the Shia world, in some places, they are not able to express their love in the manner that they wish to. Right. They are under persecution, they are under difficulty. And Imam alayhi salam also was, of course, amongst the most difficult of times, was the time of the 11th holy Imam. It is said that he was given to a prison of a man by the name of Yahya, Yahya ibn Qutayba. So this Yahya had in his house a place where he keeps wild animals. Mm. He keeps wild animals. He decides that I will put Hassan ibn Ali into that chamber with the wild animals. Some of them lions even. Lions? In, in the hadith. Yes. Vicious wild animals. So according to the riwayah, he wanted to do this. His wife came to him and said, don't do this. This will hurt you. You see, anyone who's the enemy of Ahl al-Bayt, who wants bad for the Ahl al-Bayt, will definitely see disgrace in this world. Absolutely. This has been seen throughout history. Yes, We'll see humiliation in this world. And Akhirah. And Akhirah, of course. Of course yes. Akhirah is a foregone conclusion. But at the, at the beginning, they will see in this world. He, so he, didn't ignore, he ignored this wife of his. And what did he do? He dragged Imam al-Askar into that area where there is the wild animals. The narration says... What the narration says, at that moment, he watched. He saw that the animals were calm and Imam salam was in sajda. We have this, by the way, also Imam al-Hadi That's right. Yes. Other Imam salam But you know, sometimes people say, this is a miracle from Allah. They did something to the animals. They don't understand that the maqam of Imam is not restricted to human beings. You know, sometimes you think, oh, it's the Imam of Ahl al-Bayt. This is Imam al-Insi wal-Jan, <laughs> you know, the, Im the Imam of human beings and jinn. These animals, the awe that this individual, hujia, hujia, oh, that, they are not able to harm this individual. Not that in the sense that, you know, they are somehow stopped. They are just all of a sudden humbled before him. They are not able. So they saw all, he saw all of them calm and Imam alayhi salam in sajda, yes, Qa'iman, then he says, Qa'iman yusalli. Then he took him out. And this is subhanAllah how Allah disgraced him. Mm. He said, if the animals are like this, that means they're going to be okay. So he went and the animals devoured him. Completely mm. tore him into pieces. After mm. he had taken Imam right, al-Askari right. out of the particular area, so the chamber. By his own animals. By his own animals. They devoured him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disgraced him in this world. Before Akira, as it is the outcome of those who stand against the Ahl al Bayt. Just to connect with this, actually, before we come to Brother Mullah Rashid on the uh, time spent in prison, there's a similar narration where the Imam was put in another prison and they inquired about Imam al Askari. They said, How is he? And they said to him, We want you to put him in a prison of the worst of the worst. Mm. So now the prison in which the Imam was, they say, well, we found two of the worst of men right now in Samarra in Iraq, and we've put the holy Imam in their prison. But what's interesting is that those who we consider to be the, the worst, we found them in prayer behind the Imam. SubhanAllah. So when the Imam is in such that we found them praying behind the Imam. In other words, they were so moved by the personality of the Imam. You know, sometimes 
You see a righteous person, you're so moved by him. You meet a scholar, a marja, for example, you're so moved by him. I always say this, you know, sometimes people go and they meet, for example, the ulama in, in Najaf or the ulama in Qum, and they're so moved by the energy that comes, that radiates from them. Imagine the energy that radiates from the masoom, yeah. from the infallible, you know. This is just a gist Unbelievable. Of, you know, of, yeah. of, what is, you know, of what is to come when the 12th Imam comes. And hence the hadith says when the Imam will come, and he will place his head, his hand, wada ayadhu ala ras al ibad. He will put his hand on the heads of the people, and just by putting that, their knowledge will increase. So just by the presence of the Imam, these people were so moved. They said, "Why have you not harmed him?" They said, "How can we harm him? He prays all night and he fasts all day. We have absolutely no reason to harm him." So, inshallah, before we continue. I want to bring back our brother Mullah Rashid, Mashallah. inshallah, to bless us with another beautiful nasheed in honor of Imam Al Askari, alayhi salatu wassalam, or anything that you may want to, inshallah, uh, contribute on today's program. Jazakallah, brother Allah bless you mashallah for the beautiful recitation before we uh, move over to our final part of the program alhamdulillah we have a surprise today for our mu'mineen and inshallah since we are celebrating the birthday of the 11th imam uh, well you cannot have a birthday without a cake right Masha so Allah. alhamdulillah uh, we have been blessed that today we remember imam al-askari alayhi salatu wassalam I, before we cut the cake just a small uh, point here for our respected audience, lovers of Imam al-Askari alayhi salam, just came across a narration, not a narration, one of the aqwal of the ulama, mm -hmm. marhum Ayatollah Sheikh Mujtahidi al-Tahrani. He says, anytime you have a haja, anytime you have a dua, and I found this very powerful actually, 
Anytime you have a dua, anytime you have a haja, you want to make istighatha with the 12th Imam, he says, call the mother of Imam al hujjah Call Lady Nargis, mm. salamullahi alayha. Call a father of Imam al hujjah Imam al-Askari, alayhi salatu salam, and ask them to ask their son to help us. Because it is wajib on the son to listen to the parents. Mm. Mm. So imagine this, you know, when you need help and you want to call Imam al-Mahdi, alayhi salatu salam, Call him through his mother and his father, Imam al Askari. And I found this very beautiful. I read this maybe two, two days ago. It says, Call Lady Nargis because the mother holds a maqam, the mother holds a position. Now imagine being the mother of Imam al Mahdi and the wife of Imam al Hassan al Askari. Thank you so much, Shaykhna. May Allah bless uh, you and congratulations. We send the most auspicious and felicitations to the master of our time, Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman. Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif to all our eminent maraja, to all mu'mineen and mu'minat uh, on this auspicious occasion. And we pray to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to grant us all the tawfiq to visit Samarra, to pay respects inshallah to Imam Al-Hadi and Imam Al-Askari, Lady Nargis, as well as Lady Hakima and Lady Hudayf, by the way, the mother of Imam Al-Askari is buried there. Unfortunately, we only have four graves, but she is actually in that area, in the house of Imam Al-Hadi and Imam Al-Askari. So let's not forget her, Lady Hudayf or Lady Salil, her name is, and we ask Allah to make us of those who attain their shafa'a on the day of Qiyamah, inshallah, and be those who will be taken to paradise in the hands of Imam al-Askari Shaykhna, we would love you to do the honors of uh, just slicing the cake and inshallah with that we'll, we'll end the program inshallah. Thank you so much. It Jazakum is better Allah. if the Sayyid does it. <laughs> inshallah, we'll do it together perhaps. Ahsan, <laughs> bismillah. <laughs> Jazakumullah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.